kailan ka kaya mamamatay? Paano ka kaya mamamatay? Saan ka kaya mamamatay? Itong tanong na ito ay parang hindi pang ordination. Itong tanong na ito ay para sa matatanda o may sakit. But Ken, those questions are questions about discipleship. And it is good to be confronted with those questions a few minutes before you accept the discipleship of the diaconate. It is good to think about death as you accept the diaconate because the first seven deacons of the church were all martyrs. They were killed for the faith. They were young like you and they were killed. They did not die naturally. They stood up. They were stoned to death. They were beheaded. They were skinned alive. They were thrown to lions. But all of them, all of them were martyrs. The diaconate and martyrdom go together. Think about your death. Think about how you want to die. Think about where you think you will die. Because those questions are not only life questions. They are questions that every disciple must wrestle with. Because when the Lord calls you, come follow me, He actually means come and die with me. And those who heard, come follow me, come die with me, were killed. Why? Why is death and why is dying connected with service? Why is death, why is dying connected with the diaconate? Because as a deacon, then, you will be configured into Christ. As a human being, you are already created in the likeness of God. As a deacon, you will be configured into Christ. And at the essence of Christ, is the desire to love. At the essence of Christ is the fire for love. And at the essence of the fire for love is the willingness to die for the beloved. So it is there. It is in the essence of the diaconate to be willing to die for others, to be willing to die for the Lord. And that is your vocation. You were not called to, to wear a beautiful dalmatic you were not called just to assist the bishop at the liturgy. You were called for a mission of charity, as the second reading said. But most of all, you are called, like the first seven deacons, to be martyrs. To be a martyr for the Lord. If you're a deacon, and God willing, if you're a priest later on, and you become wealthy because you are ordained. You are a thief. You are stealing from the church. Because no deacon, no priest, no bishop has a right to get rich from the treasures of the church. Die to self-enrichment. I would be ashamed of you if you became richer as a deacon and you became wealthier as a priest because your vocation is to die to self-enrichment. You're being called to die to self-like. To die to self-like. You are not called to be liked by all. You are not called to get emoticons that you are loved or that you have a thumbs up. That is not your vocation. In fact, your vocation is the opposite. To say no to likes, to popularity, to power. To die to self-like and then to die to self-adoration. 
what more? To die for. To die for people. The first task of the seven deacons was to feed the poor, the orphans, and the widows. Pray for the hungry. But after praying for the hungry, you must feed the hungry. It is not enough to pray the liturgy of the hours. It is not enough to pray that the hungry be satisfied. You must feed. God called you to have a holy death. And the key to holy death is dying for others that they may live. Die to, die for. And the last, die with. To die with. You have companions who are willing to die with you. Bishop Dell and I are willing to die with you. Your brother priests, we welcome you to the clerical fraternity, to the brotherhood of the Presbyterium. And we with you are called to die with you. But if there should come a time when you see that we are, that we are enjoying life too much, then do not look at us, look at the Lord. Your bishops, your brothers might fail you, but when you have no one to die with you anymore, look at Jesus. He's always there, ready to die with you. You can always die with Him. You will never die alone because the Lord will tell you, come follow me, come die with me. When you preach, it is the Lord who speaks. May your lips die. When you bless, it is the Lord who blesses. May your face die and fade away. When you serve, it is the Lord who serves. When you feed, it is the Lord who feeds. May can become invisible. May can fade away so that only Jesus will be seen in your life. Kailan ka kaya mamamatay? Ang sagot ko ngayon, ngayon na. You are being called to die now. And when you stand up after I have laid my hands on you, you have died. And a new John Kennedy will rise up, configured to Christ the servant. Today, Ken, you will die. And we are happy to see you die. Because when you die, we will receive life from the Lord. How will you die? Ken, do not, do not die from a lingering sickness. Die with love. That is the only way to die. If the Lord is everywhere, you can die everywhere. You do not die at the pulpit only. You do not die at the altar only. You do not only die when you baptize. Die everywhere and grab every, every opportunity to die. Because the Lord calls you to die every day. If there is one day in your life as a deacon that you did not die to self-like, to self-adoration, to self-worship, to self-enrichment. If there is one day in your life when you did not die with just your bishops and with us, your brother priests, and with, uh, with the Lord, that day was wasted. That day is wasted. Because your day only becomes fruitful when it is spent dying for the Lord, with the Lord, for the poor, the orphans, and the widow, dying to yourself that others may live. And thank you for saying yes to this call to die. I am willing to journey with you. We will grow old together, living for the Lord, dying for and with the Lord. And at the sunset of your life, may the Lord who has configured you to Him welcome you to paradise and say, Welcome, Ken, good and faithful servant who has died a million times 
enter into life everlasting.